Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. We purchased this exercise bike after doing a lot of research on the internet and considering all the pros and cons. Finally decided to go for this bike. I want to share my views and criteria by which I pointed my finger at this bike from lifelong. Let me make it clear this video is not sponsored by lifelong but I wanted you to know what criteria I looked at before purchasing this bike. I watched numerous videos on YouTube and read many articles about the exercise bike. And what I realized is that the primary concern in purchasing any item is reliability. Reliability means the item should be in working condition for a long time or at least for a specified period of time. Many people will just go for an air bike where they can exercise their entire body. Let me tell you one of my friends purchased an air bike thinking he would be using it for his upper and lower body. But the thing is he is not able to use it at all. It is so hard to exercise both portions of the body at the same time. It is possible only in the case of running. I suggest looking for an exercise bike only to make the lower body strong. While exercising on the bike, let the upper body take some load off the lower body. It will not make you so tired but will make your lower body more vital motivating you to continue. So decide wisely. The friend I am talking about was ready to sell his air bike and I also agreed to purchase it at a throwaway price. I was getting a good deal. But then fortunately I did some research on the internet and watched various videos on exercise bikes including air bike, spin bike, flywheel bike. I also studied the types of resistance and their advantages and disadvantages. Before deciding on any bike I understood friction and magnetic resistance. As I mentioned there are two types of resistance friction and magnetic. Friction resistance based exercise bikes will create more noise and dust and need more maintenance than magnetic based bikes. Friction resistance based bikes will have a pad touching the wheel and in turn will make noise and dust. Due to this touch the pad's life will not be long and you will be required to change it within 6 to 12 months of its use which is another headache. But in the case of a magnetic resistance based bike there is no touch to the wheel which in turn will not create any noise. There is no touch, hence there is no noise and dust created and it will require negligible amount of maintenance that too after 2-3 to three years. If I talk about air bikes which create more noise and are less reliable, less reliable in a sense means that the belt which is used for the air bike will get torn within a couple of months if it is used regularly. I didn't want this type of headache of replacing the item often. Instead of paying more money later, let's put in some extra cash now and purchase a reliable exercise bike. So I bought this bike based on magnetic resistance and it is a spin bike not an air bike. I got it with an excellent offer of 11,000 rupees which is not so costly by considering a magnetic resistance bike. The main drawback of magnetic resistance bike is it won't give you many options of changing the resistance levels. This bike has only two resistance levels whereas friction based bikes will provide you with options of various resistance levels with this amount. I don't need many resistance levels so I went for this. You need to decide based on your needs. If you need high intensive exercise and want to save money you can use a friction based bike. But let me tell you, before going for it, friction based bikes will not be costly now but in the long run they will cost you massive in terms of maintenance. These are my views, my opinions. The ball is in your court, you have to decide what you want, what's your need. My primary purpose in buying this exercise bike was to strengthen my calves, hamstrings, glutes and quads. I didn't want to get tired by exercising together on my upper body and lower body. And let me tell you why I want to strengthen my quads, glutes, hamstrings and calves. It's not about the look but knee pain. Let me clear it up. I don't have knee pain but I want to ensure I don't get it in the future. As most of the ladies start having 
knee pain due to calcium deficiency and the other reasons. If you have weak calves, quads, hamstrings and glutes, you will have knee pain in the future regardless of whether you are male or female. But if you have these parts of your body strong, you will never suffer from knee pain. So considering the future, I wanted to make my lower body stronger than my upper body. It's not like I'm ignoring my upper body. I'm doing other exercises for that part like jogging and swimming on alternate days. I don't want to stress my body. Our body gives indications and we should listen to and respect those indications. Never try to stress your body beyond its limits. If you do, your body will tell you and you need to stop then and there. If you really want to live a healthy life, you should learn to obey your body's symptoms, signals, indications or whatever you want to name them. But listen to them and obey them. If you listen to the body, the body will listen to you. Your body will run smoothly like if a car is timely serviced, the vehicle will run smoothly without any hiccups or glitches. If you found this video informative and useful, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel. Bye bye, see you in the next video.